accessories. I've just about had enough. What's up? You know Angelo? The gardener? The one that's been looking after your honeysuckle? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, I saw him the other day up the road with another woman. He's been chasing you for months. I know. I'm tired. I'm tired of us finding Riz, these men. I'm tired of hearing you say the same thing over and over again, Riz. Really? You really need to ask yourself a question. Do you need counselling? Are you serious? Yes, it's a basic but crucial question, but you have to ask yourself that. Okay. Riz, I think it takes a lot of courage and bravery to quietly take yourself to a counsellor and say, I want more for myself. You think so? Yeah. In whatever shape or form that comes in, yeah? Well, I do suppose that turning to others for help then, Debs, is a very natural and yes. human response. Mm. Well, so it should be. Yeah. Yeah. I suppose we could all benefit from having someone to help think something through or cope with a stressful situation. Even, like me, there is a moment of crisis. <laughs> But yet often, even I hear people say they don't want to burden their friends or family or that they're too fearful that they'll be judged, misunderstood or be told what to do. Yes. It surprises me still that there's such a stigma around counselling and often these mm. negative messages and judgmental connotations prevent people from reaching out for support. Mm. I've always believed you don't have to be mad, bad or sad to go to counselling. But unfortunately, most people wait until they're in a crisis before they take the plunge. I'm in a crisis and mm. I'm not mad, sad, bad or anything <laughs> like that. But our aim in this video is to help you make a more informed decision and become more educated on the benefits of employing a professional and a skilled listener and what it means to embark on the process of counselling. Firstly, what is professional counselling? Well. Counselling, for a start, Debs, mm -hmm. is confidential. Mm -hmm. As we've discussed in a previous video, counselling offers a private and confidential space in which you, the client, can disclose your concerns. Although it may seem a bit daunting at first to talk to a stranger, sharing your concerns with someone who is not associated with your family or friendship circle means that they can benefit from knowing what is shared stays in the room. Yeah. And this can be experienced as a huge relief but having said that, professional counsellors are not above the law, as there are limits to confidentiality, which is usually explained by the counsellor in the first session. Mm -hmm. We have already made a video on confidentiality, so if you want further information on how confidenti confidentiality is managed, please look that up. <laughs> so Debs, counselling is contractual. Yes. Once you've had time to share your concerns, your counsellor will focus on establishing a working contract and help you elicit what your primary goals are. Mm. Yeah. Mm. In other words, you're working together to reach a desired outcome that will benefit you moving forward in your life. Mm. Whatever you also find in the contract are practical aspects of your work together. And this will include time and financial commitment. Yeah, that's a big yeah. one. Agreeing not to turn up under the influence of alcohol or drugs. I promise I won't do that. <laughs> what happens to you if you're late or miss a session? And mm. what happens around holiday and breaks? Yeah. Expectations on mm. the importance of the appropriateness of how counselling ends and having at least one final session is considered important part of the process of counselling. It's yeah. quite fundamental actually. Yeah. So hopefully over time, our videos will become more clinical and we will be exploring various processes of counselling skills and practice in more depth. And the intricacies of endings and ending therapy is a fundamental aspect, like I said, of that therapeutic process. It's quite a big subject yes, in itself. Sure. The counsellors should make available upon request the qualifications and confirm that they receive professional supervision and that they are affiliated with an accrediting body such as the BACP, mm. the UKCP mm. and that they abide by their code of ethics. Debs, yes, counselling is an exploration. It certainly is. Some people seek counselling having a clear reason, like a phobia or an addiction problem. Mm. This is a clear and known to the client, but some people seek counselling because they find themselves in a crisis situation, like a relationship problem, a bereavement or redundancy. They mean gardeners. <laughs> However, many enter counselling with unclear reasons, but just a feeling of general dissatisfaction, like not having any meaning in life or an unhappiness such as a depression or general anxiety and it can take some exploration to uncover what the real issue is and create an achievable goal based on these outcomes. Riz? Yes? Counselling can be empowering. Really? Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
Well, one of the reasons I became a counsellor was to empower people. And by that, I mean through exploration and the bravery it takes to embrace change. It's a big deal. Over time, clients begin to stand in their own power and trust their own intrinsic wisdom to make healthier choices and decisions. Mm. Yes, it's not about telling the person what to do. It's about you deciding what's right for you. Mm. As Carl Jung says, working towards individuation. Yep. You are the expert of your own life and we use our expertise to encourage you to work towards your more authentic, natural self. So I've got a, ch a chance then, Debs. You certainly do, Riz. <laughs> Counselling is about change. Okay. Challenge is both a necessary and an important component of the therapeutic process. Challenging a client in a relational context comes in many guises, ranging from a robust, provocative confrontation at one end to tender, compassionate, evocative challenge at the other. Challenges can be subtle and non-verbal, just receiving the therapist's silent, caring gaze <laughs> can be a massive challenge for someone. <laughs> Indeed. A key aspect of the counsellor's role is to question. Mm -hmm. What the client does to raise awareness around repeated patterns of behaviour in relationships with themselves, others and the world around them. And they are to explore how clients may sabotage the good things in their lives and what stops them achieving what they want. Debs, yes. Counselling is caring. <laughs> Counsellors offer emotional and psychological support without the agenda or the investment from relatives or friends. The experience of exploring your thoughts and feelings with another can relieve your sense that you are not alone with your problems. Mm -hmm. So just imagine you arrange to see the same person at the same time on the same day regularly, mm -hmm. every week for a period of time. This is the strangest relational experience you will ever have. But by its very nature, this constancy and consistency of meeting is what makes the process work. Yeah, yeah. true. You'll see the counsellor sitting in the same seat every week and you and she would or he would have remembered the content of the session mm -hmm. from the week before and the week before that. Mm. This is what we call an uncontaminated space. Absolutely, because research has shown that the main criteria that creates change in therapy is the client and therapist relationship. Counselors are committed in the art of skillful listening and are dedicated in understanding your life from your perspective. The experience of this can make you feel really cared for. Mm. Counseling raises awareness. Mm. Counselors help their clients hear themselves louder. Self-awareness is about opening the heart and mind to allow you to experience your inner self. We work on formulating the right questions so that you find the right answers. Mm. Often these answers are slightly out of awareness and this leads us to say, counsellors raise awareness from the unconscious. Yes, yeah. because it's important to stress that counselling is not only about working with what we are aware of, but more about patterns of behavior that we are not aware of. We raise from the unconscious feelings, thoughts, and needs, and bring them into conscious awareness. We can then work through them. Having someone actively listen and help explore and challenge your thought processes will aid insight that helps develop a strong sense of self. It's important to place the emphasis that the process of counselling is guided by your pace and not that of the counsellors. Counselling is definitive. All counselling comes to an end at some stage. So does, say, the BACP. The British Association of Counsellors and Psychotherapists. In their Code of Ethics, it emphasises the, <clears throat> um, the point that in its definition, a person is temporarily in the role of client. Counsellors and clients need to collaboratively work towards a conclusion or a resolution to the work. Although the process of counselling can raise more questions than answers, most clients come to terms with the issues and concerns they brought in in the beginning and see them in a more positive way. So a client whose depression is lifted may begin to just experience their life having just that bit more meaning and they may leave being more curious about the potential for their future. So in summary, Counselling offers support, insight, change, information and psychoeducation. Yes, until next time. <laughs>